I've never breathed while We have gone through the best of the best. It's now or never. That was massive. This is gonna be hype. This is your moment to shine. It's down to this final play. Bigger than me, you're not bigger than me. Pick up from the streets, but I'm bigger on the scene. Yeah, yeah. bigger than me, you're not bigger than me. You know? Singapore is your home for the final day of the group stage here at the Horizon Cup. Only two spots are left in playoffs, so it's do or die for four of the squads competing today. Hey everyone, it's your boy Digon here with the Rocky Zorro and Riku to bring you the final day of the group stage of the Horizon Cup. Riku, how's it going? You got the off yesterday and you got to see Team Secret take a win. I know, right? My SCA heart is so happy and, of course, so pumped today. Since it's the last day of the group stages, a lot of teams will be pushed to their limits. If there are any trump cards in pockets, pocket picks we still haven't seen, I bet now's the time to bring them up. For sure. Rocky Zoro, what are you excited about for today? Well, so with Tribe's chances to go further in the tournament ending yesterday, I can finally <laughs> leave behind the little bit of bias and fanboying that I was carrying along and uh, focus on pure analysis. So, yeah, I'm excited for the matches, that's for sure. Don't worry, you're not alone. My, my heart hurt there for our Tribe Gaming <laughs> friends as well. All right, first, let's take a look at the standings in Group A. Dakun Gaming have locked up the first seed with Ralster Y holding the second seed because of their head-to-head -head record. Now over in Group B, our second team, from China, Thundertalk Gaming have also topped the group with Team Secret securing a second place spot of their own. Trust us, it's those two teams at the top at one and two. Now, with the groups concluding today and we've seen enough games under our belts, I wanna know who are your MVPs of the group stage and this time, I won't steal the good ones, so Riku, you can go first with the MVP of Group B. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm gonna say Z from Thunder Talk. I think he's the best player in the world at the moment overall because Z has crazy mechanics and twice the champion pool because he played both roles. Um, before his transition from top to mid, I feel like he could have been the best top laner in the tournament, but you know what? I think he's the best mid laner in Horizon Cup and that's insane because on top of his transition, the rest of Thunder Talk's lanes had roster changes and that didn't change his ability to carry and outplay team fights and skirmishes. Whether he's on a control mage like the Orianna or an AD like the Riven, he is absolutely solid. Yeah, he is, and we got to see those stats earlier. It doesn't tell all of the story of the impact he's had throughout the tournament, how many game-saving plays he had on Zed, on Yasuo. It's been a ton of fun to watch. Now, Araki, who you got for us in Group A as the MVP? Yeah, when looking at Group A, and as a pro Baron laner myself, I'm going to be looking towards the top side of the map more, and I'm looking for standout performances that really surprise me. So that leads me to Rattel. I want to make the bold statement that I believe from what we've seen so far, he is the best Baron laner in the tournament Ooh. in either groups. No one has been able to match his play and a large champion pool. And not only is he mechanically outplaying his opponents, but he also barely makes any mistakes. He, you rarely see him get caught out or die if he's playing weak side. Yeah, his awareness is definitely top notch. The fact that he's been a win condition for KT, I think is the big point. And I'm pretty sure, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm pretty sure that is feeding his teammates a lot of insurance and confidence. Yeah, for sure. Again, you saw the stats there. The second most gold percentage out of all the players in the tournament. And when you have that much gold on you, that's easy even more pressure and he's still been able to perform. Now, as we take a look at the schedule, we've got four matches today, but the matches that matter for knockouts are plain and simple. It's our first match of the day, Sengoku versus Team Queso for that final spot out of Group B, and then TSM versus SBTC for the final spot out of Group A. So let's start there and dive into our second elimination match, SBTC from Southeast Asia versus TSM from Brazil. Now, Araki, what do you think is going to be the difference maker in that side of the matchup for TSM? Well, for one, it's confidence. I had a little bit of an interaction on social media with TSM's director of mobile, where he was talking about their results in scrims and how he believes they have a good shot at proving how good Brazil actually is if the team minimizes mistakes. From their play at, Hori at the Horizon Cup, I've quickly become a big fan of the players on the team. Their aggression is fun to watch, and namely Carlito has not se seized to, Im <clears throat> to impress. Excuse me. In TSM's match versus KT, he was showing us a whole new level of mechanical play for supports on the Galio on mobile when he was just a sponge flashing for initiations. That's so sick. And uh, speaking of Galio, this will probably be a very contested pick between SBTC and TSM. 
perhaps even banned away from TSM because Carlito can single-handedly carry games on it. And if it is banned, I'm expecting him to go back to Rakan or Braum. The thing is, Rakan is sitting at a 37% win rate out of the 16 games we did see him, and Braum is currently at 21% win rate uh, out of the 14 games. So both picks uh, aren't exactly too hot in their results. Yeah, so if those kind of alternatives aren't great, uh, I'm gonna challenge you here. What is an answer that you think that uh, Carlito can pull out here that could help TSM that maybe isn't one of those two? Yeah, I, I, another pick that uh, definitely does play into TSM's aggressive playstyle is the Alistar. It's doing better than the other two picks I just mentioned. It's right now at a 50% win rate. And again, it's a tanky, engaged CC support with uh, which Carlito uh, does favor. Yeah, right. Galio, Tanky, Engage, CC has that. So does Alistair. Makes a lot of sense. Riku, what else about TSM do you think needs to be priority for them? Well, for me, uh, you know, the, the player alongside Carlito in the Dragon Lane, we've got Petroni, mm. who has been incredibly consistent. Uh, I think one of the contributing factors why TSM uh, was able to match roster-wise team fighting was because of this player. He can play anything. Ezreal, Lucian, uh, Senna, you name it. Uh, he also never hesitates to flash in to set up for himself. And I think that's going to be super important. Uh, because if you want to take, uh, because you want to take every single shot you can when it comes to opening opportunities for yourself, uh, especially when you're up against SBTC. All right. Well, for more on Riku's difference maker in this matchup, Petroni shared a word on his Horizon Cup run so far. Let's take a listen. I thought the game was very important for us to not only show the Brazil that we were capable of beating the most dangerous regions in the world, and especially in Asia. It was a very important game for us. E, infelizmente, a gente não conseguiu sair com a vitória, mas eu acho que a gente fez um bom trabalho, a gente mostrou o nosso jogo, a gente mostrou para o que a gente veio. Eu acho que a gente vai confiante para esse último, antes de vir aqui para Singapura. Eu era bastante fã dos jogadores da SBTC, a gente estudava bastante eles, e jogar contra eles vai ser um prazer, e ainda mais definindo o nosso destino no campeonato, eu acho que vai ser muito divertido. Eu acho que vai ser uma série incrível, Obrigado there, Petroni. Now, for the SBTC side, where are you looking for the Vietnamese team to shine? Well, their for fundamentals me, have I'm gonna looked... have to look at Dragon Lane. Sorry, Riku, go ahead. First. <laughs> no, you go ahead. All I right, apologize. okay. Uh... I'm looking at Kirill, of course, Dragon Lane again, because, you know, while he has been a bit low-key for the past few days of the tournament, he's very reliable and can hold his lane even up against scary teams with scary Dragon Laners like Luna and Wind from RY and DKG. But, you know, yesterday he did way more than that. We saw Kirill shine on the Ezreal in their series against Tribe. He's so confident and precise with his Mystic shots, and I definitely want to see that again, because I feel like if SBTC doesn't get ahead in the laning phase, they will be forced to play into TSM's team fights, and we all know how how deadly they could be. And Kiro will be a huge factor to winning those 5v5s. Yeah, he was looking good on the Ezreal. What about you, Rocky? What do they need to do? Yeah, the, uh, their fundamentals is the thing that I touched on just uh, just then, and I do think they look fantastic, regardless of the, fire, the firepower that they do lack a little bit in the solar laners, in my opinion. Uh, it's general. It's a general takeaway for me uh, on the Asian teams that they are a step above in macro and their understanding of how to tackle playing around objectives and knocking down the outer turrets one by one. I'm yet to see any Western teams match that style, and to relate it back to the matchup against TSM, it would benefit SBTC uh, to avoid and uh, stop getting caught up too much in the aggression that the, and the chaos that TSM will try to throw at them and instead slow down the pace and utilize their strengths. All right, if that's the case, then I'm looking a lot here at July in that mid lane. All right, we'll get those teams clashing in match three, but the day kicks off with Team Queso versus Sengoku Gaming playing for that final spot out of Group B. So what are you looking for for each of these teams to improve in order to lock in a playoff spot first, Sengoku Riku? Okay, for Sengoku, I want to see them, I want to see this team sticking to their winning formula back in the Japan Cup. You know, Rush being the setter and Hawk as the ace. Yesterday, we saw mid-jungle picks that doesn't necessarily set up for each other. We're talking about Wukong Ziggs or Yasuo Graves. So the early laning phase engages relied solely on Dejiwo roaming the mid as an Alistar. But if they do default to the formula, I'm expecting Rush to be on a Lee Sin or a Nunu. And if they feel more confident on the draft, I want to finally see Hawk on his monster account. Araki? 
I, I completely agree with Riku. I think the uh, Lee Sin and the Nunu for Rush and the Alistar for Deju have been really big. I particularly like how they link up together and sync up for plays around the map in the early game and the mid game. I think that's a huge win condition for Sengoku and for their hopes and their chances for their tournament for this tournament. I hope they recognize uh, that this is one way they can play and get leads in the early game and, and utilize it more. All right, well, you saw their roster there. They've been rotating on the top side of the map with Kai and Mochi. Looks like Kai's getting the start today. We'll definitely solidify that for you when we get into the game. Now let's move on over to Team Queso. Where do you want to see the European squad improve ahead of this decider match, Riku? Yeah, I want to take a look at their confidence because, you know, I, I feel like Team Queso's match against Team Secret during day three uh, rattled their confidence a little bit. There were instances yesterday where they had positional advantages uh, around objective fights and they would hesitate, back away, and go to pull the trigger. So since this is a do or die scenario for them, I'm expecting to pump up the aggression so they don't let Sengoku dictate the pace of the game. Rocky? Yeah, I, I again, I agree. I think Riku is really on point on on her reads uh, of these two teams. I think Sengoku did look better versus TSM, uh, but at the same time. A weakness did get exposed in that series where their top side didn't look that great and they are still figuring out who to play more. Machi and Kai both are subbing in and out constantly. And while I don't think Acolyte is on the same level as Azar, I still think he's a very good player in his own right and could very possibly run away with the lead if he's given the opportunity to. All right, focus on the top side of the map. Is there anywhere else where we should be looking here, Riku? Yeah, I'm looking at the support matchup, Memorize versus Dejuo, uh, because, you know, I feel like this is also going to be centered around tank and gauge support picks. Uh, for Kesso, they have to raise themselves for early roams and setups coming from Dejuo. Either you have two options, right? You can target one while he's alone in lane, or have memorized Shadow Dejuo to see if he can punish any aggressive play in the mid lane, or another option. Maybe we get to see the Janna being played again, as that was the soft counter against Alistar yesterday. Uh, while you can't engage as a Janna, maybe if you flash monster, aggressively or something but that's very very risky um you can make reactive plays with the howling gale and monsoon to deny headbutt pulverize combos we saw that yesterday with team secret versus sengoku gaming so there is a possibility we may see that again yeah uh i mean when we saw the stats you could see they looked pretty similar except the kill participation uh deju getting all over the place so memorize is going to need to step it on up and now it's time to hear from memorize teammate queso's ibu on where the team's head is at heading into the final match we don't feel so good. Uh, we have games that we could won, but we make some mistakes, maybe for nervous, uh, I don't know. The opponent was so good, so it's okay to lose this match. We now need to focus versus Sengoku because it's the important game. We really uh, spent a lot of time uh, watching Sengoku. We are really prepared uh, for play versus them. We already did all for that game, so let's see. Is Andre cutting down Azua? There's the kill they needed on the other side as Queso do answer. For us, it's not only win. Uh, win. We love uh, competitive, uh, we love compete, so it's not only win, we, we have in the blues to uh, compete. Of course, we are growing so much. Uh, we are playing versus the, team, the best teams in the world. Uh, we are growing so much, we are learning every day, not only in the stage, also in the scrims, and we're going to take it back for, in, for Europe. Now, after hearing that from Ibu, I know that you had a quick thought you wanted to touch on uh, on his champ pool here, Iraqi Zoro. Yeah, well, first, uh, I'm loving the confidence. And I think it's really important that they have recognized that dwelling on the past doesn't really matter because they still have a chance as long as they win today, they can move on. Um, the champion pool point was that the Senna has been such a good pick for Ibu. It's reliable, safe, provides a lot of utility for the team, so enables his team more. I prefer it much more over some of the other picks that require an individual performance, like the Draven that we did see uh, in their match against Team Secret. So I'm hoping they can prioritize the Senna. All right, let's see who the fans believe will be the third seed out of Group B in our MasterCard fan predictions. And there you have it. It's a little bit slanted towards Sengoku Gaming. 57% of y'all at home think they're going to take the win, which leads us to our predictions. Let's go with you first, Araki Zora. Who do you have taking this one? Uh, I, I do think this will be a really close series. I'm very split between supporting my Western fellas or following the analysis of uh, that Sengoku have looked better. Um, bottom line, I think I'll give it to, to Sengoku over Team Queso 2-1. All right, Riku, time's running out. Quickly, get yours in there. Who do you think is going to win? 2-1 Sengoku Gaming, for sure. 
All right, there you have it. This is the last day to show up or your run ends here. So who can continue their first chapter, their first chapter of the Wild Rift International Plays, we send it off for match number one. See ya. Team Queso went from Shelly charging the next and almost losing the game to Acolyte saving the day. We are really prepared for play versus them. We are ready to fall for that game, so let's see. And this one is going to be very important for the Thunder Talk side. We are going to be able to look at the players, 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 the players. Thunder Talk prove why we consider the Chinese teams the best in this tournament. Sí, estamos totalmente determinados en, en ganar nuestro próximo match. Bolster have improved so much. 아직도 저희 100%는 아니라고 생각하고 일단 저희가 그 드라이브 게이밍을 이기게 되면은 높은 확률로 이제 저 2위로 제가 좀더 좋은 조건에서 경기를 할수 있을 것 같습니다. Tribe Gaming, can you show something off here today? At least take a game. Knowing that we have no chance to uh, come back, it's pretty disappointing. I just want to say that this isn't all NA has to offer. If we can beat them a couple games, it'll show that the playing field isn't as wide as we originally thought. I do love the pressure that's on SBTC versus TSM. TSM have had a bit of a rocky roller coaster. When we keep it positive and try to laugh off anything that doesn't work, we're really confident that we'll make it out of groups and make history for Brazil. SBTC have fully Come online. It's down to this final play. Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world for day five of the Wild Rift Horizon Cup. It has been a blast. These past four days have, according to Hawk Battery, and I agree with them, absolutely massive. <laughs> that was massive. I love Bravo. that call so We're much. getting in to the final day of groups. We have a couple of matches today that are make or break. And we're starting off with one of them right now, Sengoku versus Team Gay. So, uh, Keso, on one side, we've got the Japanese warriors, Sengoku. They are fierce. They are ready to take on the world. And on the other side, cheese. <laughs> now, from a, from a logo standpoint, samurai warriors tend to have a a pretty sharp blade, which can cut through cheese pretty quickly. <laughs> and it's not going to be quite the, the stinky affair. But for Team Queso, we don't want to count them out. In their moments of brilliance, um, for me, as a jungler, I've been really excited about Andres's play whenever he's been able to get a leg up in those early game leads. Yeah, this team shows a lot in the early game as well. I, I'm really impressed with their jungler, but I'm also very impressed alongside many of the other people on the broadcast with uh, Baron Laner Acolyte. Mm -hmm. Especially when he's on this Darius, he has shown us some of the more dominant games of that role of the entire tournament. Now, it doesn't have the same level of consistency as some of the others that we've seen, but when he gets those pop-off games, 
it's just completely lights out. And, and to be fair, you know, Acolyte has usually had some of his best moments, not on kind of the, the trifecta of Baron Laners that Iraqi Zora has really played up. The the three Baron Lane queens in Fior, <laughs> Riven, or Camille. And also the Alligator. And, oh, uh, and then you got to throw <laughs> Renekton in there. But usually the best games have been from Acolyte's Darius. And I think for those who don't know or are familiar with the Origin series, going into that Grand Finals against Riggs, Leon was kind of touted as the best Baron laner of Europe. So not only for Acolyte to overcome and prevail against his opponent in that lane, but also coming here to Horizon Cup and developing himself and showing to be one of the brighter stars of this roster is, is something to take away, win or lose tonight. To me, that top lane matchup is even more important in a series like this, where you're against Sengoku, who have been subbing in and out their Baron laners. For this match, it does look like we have Kai back to that starting role, but they've been subbing him out for Mochi in some of these series as well. For a team that is splitting time with two different Baron laners, maybe this is that moment where Acolyte can truly pop off and truly show why he is the one and only Baron laner for Team Queso. Notably, his laners have not been removed from the band pool quite yet. It's just that Twisted Fate and Senna that you mentioned uh, as being really powerful for Ibu. Especially the analyst that's uh, touting Ibu's champion pool when right. the Senna was available for Ibu. It not only allows Memorize to be a primary carry or at least to have a lot of income from his side thanks to having a Senna as the support despite being a Dragon Laner and the way that works, but because we're not seeing that today. Jack's also coming through as the last ban. And we're now going to see Acolyte on his community on this champion. You just mentioned that he hasn't had the biggest pop-up performances on the Baron Lane Queens, but you will need to make that happen right now if that, of, of course, is his champion of choice. The Renekton locked in as the counterpick into it could mean that this Camille does slot into jungle instead. Now, it is a, on a patch where that has been weakened and no longer has great interactions with the jungle camps on Camille's hookshot, but it does still function as a really solid ganking jungle that can side lane. Yeah, T-Tigers attempted to pull it out, and it can be a comfort pick if Andre wants to go with it. But I was going to note this, Max. Notice how Team Queso, even in the wins that Sengoku gave me, had really triumphed over. A lot of them came from the games where Rush was dominating in the early game on the Lee Sin, but they banned the Nunu instead, and Sengoku didn't even take it when they had the chance. So now this gives Andre the opportunity to take it for his own, and now they're supplying a little bit of extra follow-up engage with this Galio. Lee Sin being the choice here means that you have all that pick potential, and with Nunu off the board, as you mentioned, the premier tank jungler isn't there to be a brick wall for Rush's champion pool, so he is going to go for that, that scaling style of champion, the more selfish style of champion. Sort of going against what we heard the analysts say, uh, specifically Riku, I think, used the volleyball terms as Rush's the setter to Hawk's ace. Uh, but you do still have a lot of ways that you can play as the 2v2 here for Sengoku. You have the magic damage and the physical side. Graves tends to want to be in melee range, which really is appreciated by a champion like Orianna, who wants to attach the ball to you and pop that shockwave. There's still time for Dejawo to come in if we're going to continue down the, the ball of world terms, the, be the libero, always be. <laughs> The, the last kind of call efforts like hey they're saving him counter pick they, they are indeed saving him counter pick so and now that we've seen that Diana and Corky are locked in the board we know that this is going to be memorized it's Galio we have seen mainly from TSM's Carlito pull out some fantastic performances on the Galio nice but Sengoku Dejawu I mean he's gonna go for that classic Alistar that he has been making great performances on anytime I see rock about Alistar now in my solo queue games I'm immediately just experiencing PTSD. <laughs> I've really been enjoying the tank support pool. I'm glad that Alistar is joining the ranks of that as well. The champion that um, is just really solid. You know exactly what he's going to do. He's going to headbutt Pulverize and he's not going to die. He has that unbreakable will. And that's just a really solid thing to have on your team, especially when you do see for Sengoku, they have a lot of setup crowd control. They've got Renekton's uh, stun that he's got with his Ruthless Predator, and Juan can go for the Chains of Corruption too to set up and kill exactly one person. But also what Alistar does is provides a secondary option for that Oriana ball as well. Another Shockwave Deliverer, very, very valuable into that backline, which as of right now, and, and will be for this game, is really only Ibu's Corky. Sengoku 
have the means of some decent primary engage, as you've already noted before, thanks to Chain of Corruptions as well as Alistar being able to, to follow up or even look for it in comboing with that Shockwave. What I'm really looking at, though, is that how committed to dives from this roster of Team Queso, because you have the Camille that can always look to lock someone down with Hextech Ultimatum. Mm -hmm. Pack is right on top of that. Hero's Entrance on top of that. Yep. If, if it's not the Camille, you've got freaking Diana, who's ready to come <laughs> in with Moonfall. I mean, everyone is just piling on in. And if Sengoku Gaming are not able to react fast enough with the disengage uh, the abilities that they have, then this is a way for Team Geiso to start off the series right. And realistically, there isn't a whole lot that you can do to disengage away from a Camille Galio engage, apart from literally stasis. You only have that as an option. If you do have that, then great, you might not die. If not, those two ultimates in conjunction are just so, so strong. I remember the two of us have played a lot of ranked games uh, on the Camille and the Galio together, those sweet summer nights God. that we had together, Rafa. <laughs> Playing the Camille Galio. Back in Galio. July and August, man. Back <laughs> when Camille was still playable in the jungle, that that was our, that was kind of like our climbing strat. Yeah. And just straight from Worked unranked well. all the way to Emerald. You know. Whatever happened to those days, Rafa? Well, small. we started playing against better players. <laughs> so it is. We what became it is. better players as well. Kind, kind of similar to the journey of many of our other teams coming in over from the West. They were the best in their regions, and now they. They've gone up against better teams. But for those all at home, make sure you don't miss out on content you're already paying for by linking your Prime account with your Wild Rift account where you'll receive a random skin chest. Thanks to our friends over at Prime Gaming. You got primers? I do, yeah. I picked up my skin just yesterday. Oh, I got yeah. Scorched Earth Renekton. Great skin. I was looking at getting a Renekton skin. So I need to get more into the Baron lane. Speaking of the Baron lane, we do have that Renekton up there in that spot. As Rush pathing around that location, Acolyte pushing pretty far could lead to some action with Rush, but on this Graves, probably more likely that he will just continue farming up and get some more levels. The interesting thing about this, anytime that junglers will, will go to their Krugs instead of the Raptors after red buff, is usually kind of indicates that they are looking to lean towards one side of the map, whereas if they go for Raptors first after red buff, they're usually wanting to come straight to mid lane, packs a little bit, push in the wave, and then get priority for one of the scuttle crabs. We are fluid Andre. <laughs> so he just takes red into Raptors, hits level three, arrives in mid, gets this push out. Now Team Queso have their pick of the litter when it comes to the Rift Heralds. Andre is actually sneaking outside of the range of vision. There is a ward that could potentially spot him, but Sengoku definitely thinks that he's topside now. Yeah, Team Queso have the jump on the rush here. Flash wow. from Andre to make sure that he can get in there. Even the flash from Rush is not going to stop Burst Blood from happening. Team Queso have taken Sengoku out of the jungle. I absolutely adore that vision play that Andres went for. Like I said, he hopped over the wall after as you toward the topside river. Sengoku were like, okay, he's picking topside. We're free to go down bot. We're free to take our Scuttle Crab and handshake that one away. But memorizing Ibu found this collapse alongside Andres. I don't know if they know that Kai is here waiting to capitalize. They know that Andre doesn't have flash for before as he already committed it for the pick on the rush. There's a lot of damage coming out from Sengoku Gaming. It's not going to kill Andres, but they will claim the Scuttle Crab this time around. Andres had a great first play to take that Scuttle Crab, but then he got just a little too greedy. You can't take both of them at the same time. The Death Timers are not long enough this early into the game, but we do get another look at this one. Memorize, great crowd control chain leads into that system. Yeah, if it wasn't for Ethan's last auto attack, that flash from Rush could have been the saving grace for him to get out of First Blood alive. Sengoku, don't get away so easy. Team Queso, solid start. And that's them about a 500, 700 gold lead into the early game. Nothing to write home about, but it is definitely one to set the pace of. But looking at the next two neutral objectives coming up just a minute from now. No one is close to hitting their first item power spike quite yet, but actually, as I say that, Ibu could be getting towards that Essence Reaver quite in time before the game objective spawn. Definitely could. I'm, I'm certainly looking at 
memorized here at this point because he is just a few seconds or a, or a minion away from hitting that level five point, at which point he can play in conjunction with Acolyte and almost certainly kill one target. Just his level five now as he's walking back to the lane. He is going away from where Acolyte actually is, so Team Queso are planning on coordinating this so, so soon, but they have this opportunity as he's now recalling to go for one of the objectives that they have available to them. Perhaps it's Rift Herald, that's where Acolyte already is. Kai taking a recall as well. Look at how Sengoku are swapping lanes, so yeah. you can tell that they're putting more resources into contesting this early Rift Herald Sengoku. I mean, we have already seen such a shift in priority, and of course, with Daku Gaming specifically making the early read of playing towards the Rift Herald, trying to invest a lot of resources into snowballing one particular character, one particular carry to receive a lot of resources and just get it them stupid. So Goku initiating this swap means that they take the Rift Herald completely uncontested. And that's something that I typically really appreciate when teams do at the early stage. They go for this Rift Herald. It's a lot easier to kill. They did trade it for an Infernal Drake. That is a lot of extra damage that's being provided to the Queso now forever. And Deja Wu coming over here to assist Pai, making sure that Team Queso, despite not having Rift Herald, they had an opportunity to burn down this turret. We have to see what Rush plans on doing. He has Rift Herald on his side, but he did not crash it or spawn it into the Baron lane because Acolyte did a pretty, pretty good job of defending it. We're seeing both teams take this sort of half measure trying to defend and attack at the same time across the entire map. And I like you mentioned, Rafa, that Rush didn't pop Rift Herald. So Sengoku didn't fully commit to one side or the other, knowing that they did have three members on this bottom side of the map. So Sengoku keep that opportunity for them later. And if you look at their item builds as well, you can see the Seraph's Embrace is being built up. You can see Juan is going for its Year of the Goddess as well. They're okay scaling up and waiting for a couple more item spikes before they get their team fights on. Rise wants to look for Kai here. Even if they don't get the kill, pushing him off will do enough of a job for Team Queso. They rush this down. Raquel's gonna crash. It's gonna be super close. Oh, but Sengoku are gonna be the ones that come out on top of the first break. Nice bump and gold for Sengoku, specifically centered around this top side pack. Juan picking that up. Rush picking that up. Their balloon just a bit more into this game. They have a little ways to go before they can match that goal of previous, mostly due to this lane swap that Juan took for himself, that turret structure is going to be nice, especially when the next Rift Herald comes online, and especially when it comes to some keep up. That was just Rush is still sitting on item completion, so he has to respawn right now. However, the rest of Team Queso are not necessarily in a position where they can capitalize and catch someone out from Sengoku and start a fight. So, this tempo time, or this tempo reset for Rush, not going to be punished from the side of Team Queso, just because the defense has been such a great job. And honestly, Smack, it's been so close, and such little action. I hope I'm not, you know, caster cursing it right now, but I'm, I'm knocking on the desk just to make sure that both Sengoku and Team Peso are not only playing with respect, but also trying to optimize every single play. Each other out as they sort of have been this entire tournament. You know, both these teams have been scaling up in their team strategies across the entirety of the Horizon Cup, and this is the best time to call them. This is the match point for both of them. If they win this series, they are in. They lose, they are out. Simple as that. This is their direct competition for that third seed in this group. So, so play patient for that third opportunity and take low risk plays. Rift Herald spawn. They got a charge off. They didn't take down the tier one turret though against Team Kaser. They're gonna hold on to the middle center point of their map lose that center point, and then it becomes just that much easier for Sengoku. They start invading to your jungle, start getting aggressive vision down, and that's when things start getting really tricky for Team Queso, trying to catch side waves and rotating out, because you have to go back to the top of the show, and look at what kind of champions that Sengoku have. They have powerful pick champions, Shockwave, Chain of Corruptions, and Alistar combo. You combo that together, it's dead. They're still taking their time. They're, they're not trying to activate that immediately. You can see that with Juan, he's moving again up to this Baron lane, not trying to get priority for himself in the mid lane. He's just trying to get as many resources as possible into him before the team fights actually begin. Because as you said, Dejuo has his head of pulverize. He has that accessible at level two. He's level eight, so he's definitely waiting for a bit, but this might be the opportunity. Packages available. Ibu is coming. 
as fast as he can. There it is. Oh, there's the engage. Hexec will come in on the Hawk. They want to land the rest of the combo. Shockwave barely misses. Chain of Corruption is Ooh. response on the Memorize. Looking at Rush, putting in some damage. Stasis on to Kai, and just frontlining for the rest of the team. And how can it be possible, Spax, that no <laughs> one goes down? Well, the reason is because Sengoku went for that full disengage. They backed up, they said, okay, they're coming into us. Let's give them that opportunity. Let's just back away, play the defense, toss out this chain of corruption, make sure that they have this zone field that they can't really do anything about, try to play away from this package that oh. now has to be used to ah, the because field. Renekton just hurts. Okay. Kai, he's a big scary crocodile. Yeah. He's got a blade of the root king. You hit him with the empowered ruthless predator, and he does a crap ton of your maximum HP as an MP. But during that time, Andres was able to secure the Rift Herald. He's gonna go for another turn. He's gonna guide it over to Baron Lane. The rest of Sengoku are gonna commit four members to this mid lane push. They're gonna take tier one. Mid lane turret feels great to have. Excellent headbutt to cancel out that justice punch. Three man taunt. Remember, I was trying to set up on the Dead Wolf, but he pops the Unbreakable Will. Or actually, not quite. He's just that damn tanky. Yep. Alistar, super tank, as it turns out, especially with that Aftershock that he popped earlier with the Headbutt Pulverize combination. And like I said, he did a great job to stop the momentum of Memorized on that engage. He was clearly going for something with that Justice Punch. Could have potentially gone for the uh, the Justice Punch flash play, but didn't end up having the opportunity because of Deji was excellent. Which move back away as a Cast a flash. flash. Yeah. He recognized the danger right there as soon as he Luna rushed forward and saw a crocodile and a cow amidst the, bu uh, the bush there. He thought to himself, this is one rodeo I don't want to be a part of. This because I don't have enough rope and I don't have enough food to move these animals away. And got the cowboy hat too. I'm going to have to hit up Kangas for that one. Mm. I, I don't know how much he's going to want this one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll wait for uh, for game four uh, to see if he actually does want to put that one back. I digress. Both teams. Again, they're, they're still feeling each other out. They're still waiting around for uh, the moment where they feel really, really powerful, where they feel that the team fights are completely theirs. And they're, because they're just sort of scaling up adjacent to each other, just waiting on cooldowns and waiting on the other teams to slip up. You see how Team Queso are just waiting for Sengoku to slip up, waiting for one carry, whether it's Hawk Wan, to just walk into a bush thinking that, oh yeah, that there's no way in there here. And then BAM! <laughs> I know it's not Halloween season, Smacks, but you know, they are trying to do the spooky wookie procedure on them. Deja Wu, Bit late. potentially looking for an engaged opportunity here. Has flash available. Nice. Nice kick from Andres. Says, hasta la vista, baby. We're not seeing you today. No more clients. Team Queso are gonna take their leave. And man, you can feel the tension in this game one smacks because both teams know if you take this game one you have the momentum lead you're only one game away from closing the distance and guaranteeing a spot into the knockout stand both teams know that they also know that if somebody on their opposition makes an aggressive move that surely they have the backup because this game has been so slow it has been so calculated for both of these squads that if someone's taking that step forward that just means that you're, you're in a bad position as Andres potentially could be. We'll be back anyway. He has the Dragon's Rage kick. But I have to say that I'm I'm favoring slightly Team Queso here because they've been able to get chip damage onto these side tier 2 turns so far. Yes, they don't have control of the tier 1 since then was the one that took down that turret just four minutes ago. But if you get an advantageous push, a pick on the Deja Wu, answers back with the Unbreakable Will have Kai on the sidelines trying to see if he can screen them, but Team Queso are going to force him back, kick away. They're just trying to force down the turret. They are not trying to play a game of actually fighting. They're trying to go for turrets, but oh god, oh. Nemo going a little too far forward, which means it's an easy shockwave from Hawk to set up. That's the Dragon Laner gone from Team Queso. A flash from Memorize to see if he can make his great escape. He used the hero's end. Oh. That's a nice, whoa, what was that move fall? Ruiz catches up on the board. Sengoku, can Team Queso clean up the pieces? Can they go for the janitor Woo! duty? Andres! Dale, 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 dale! Andres! Arriba! Jesus!
Because you are an absolute madman, brother. Triple kill for the Lee Sin on zero HP. You can see he just now purchased a full Black Cleaver, a full Guardian Angel after that one. What a pop-off from this guy. What a pop-off from you, Rafa, as well. I don't even know what you were saying at that point. That was incredible. Not quite as incredible, though, as the way the Team Queso turned this entire fight around. They got the cooldown out of Dejuo before, and then they fully committed to yeah, taking a look at this Axe replay, Max. You see that things are going a little awry. Dragon Leader flies in at the speed of sound and then gets eviscerated at the speed of sound as well. But then still re-engages the confidence from Team Queso to go back in. Very, very impressive stuff. And this is where it all turns back around for the movies. It's a gigantic chunk punch of four members. And Andres, huge props to him for being able to manage this amazing cleanup afterward. His janitorial duties have been fulfilled. Yeah, and look at, look at he, how Ruiz popping off as well, giving props to his jungler. And now Sengoku trying to contest Team Queso in the Dragon Pit. This is the third dragon of the game. Ocean will give a little bit of extra regen as well as spell vamp off. Andres onto the sideline. Ibu trying to maintain his distance, no package available. He's gonna have to Valkyrie over this wall. He doesn't really want to have the burn flash. Takes oh, a lot of oh. damage from Kai. He has to flash away. This crocodile is very committed. A dragon's rage to Kai separates him from the dragon laner. Ibu still trying to fire back with these packages and the missiles, but he's gonna go down to Deja Blue. Sengoku Gaming still on the hunt, still on the chase on to memorize and Ruiz. Ruiz taking very low. Hero's Entrance is gonna give him a little bit of reprieve with that magic damage shield, and he's gonna walk out alive. Ibu out of position once more for Team K, so he's the only member of this backline. Everybody else is full on dive, completely reckless abandon onto their backliner. It's left for Ibu, like, come on guys, don't leave me alone. I wanna come help. And then he's, he's just isolated. Everybody in Sengoku knows he is the easiest member to kill, and it all starts with him in this corner, completely alone. You gotta feel for him, but great punch. I'm not gonna lie, Smax. Ibu has been quite sus in the positioning, but the, eventually the rest of Team Queso have been able to deal with the threats from Sengoku Gaming trying to dive through the front line and take out this core team. The rest of Team Queso still Tied up with saying Goku gave me a turn to gold. Yeah. It is still an even playing field. I feel like this is one of the only games of Rising Cup that we're gonna have that goes all the way to that Elder Dragon. It's it's barreling toward that minute mark. And the, the ranks haven't actually been taken on time either, because we're about to hit 16 minutes, and it's not even close to spawning Sengoku with two dragons, Team Queso with the Infernal, which I definitely prize as the, the biggest one to have you get a lot of damage, but on a team like this, you have most- oh! Andres has been caught! Nice he hit. pops the Dragon's Rage. He had to use Flash as well, but he doesn't lose out on the DA, which is absolutely crucial, making sure that Team Queso can maintain having a jungler on the field. You know, it's crucial, but at the same time, Andres has just been playing on 1 HP the entire game anyway. So as long as it doesn't hit zero, <laughs> it's going to be all right for him. Now moving up to that side lane, just keeping pressure around the rift for Team K. So I love this move from him, knowing he doesn't necessarily need to recall. He has a lot of sustain in his kit, so he can just be an, another extra minion for his team, forcing somebody on Sengoku to come match this as they try to get pressure elsewhere. And look at that, Andres, once again, going to split push duty. Answering Baron lane side yeah. to take down this last turn. Hawk is going to answer him. There's some other members of Team Queso looking to ping the Baron, but oh boy. Know, that's a very tough objective to take down, Smacks, as we've learned from our solo queue woes. <laughs> we can let's give it time to Hawk. Okay. Whoa! Right into potential Moonfall, but a beautiful stasis from Hawk is going to buy time. Hero's Entrance will connect, though, on the knockup. Last Sonic Wave into the Resonating Strike makes the mark. Hawk goes down, but it's a three-man knockup from Deja Blue. Sengoku Gaming with the counter re-engage. Kai on the front lines, chasing away Team Queso. And Andres doesn't have any reinforcements coming for him this time around, as Sengoku now have three to three. They've evened the kill score at this point. It was in Team Queso's lead the whole rest of the game, and now they're trying to move into the rest of the jungle. They're trying to see if they can get anything more, but this game is just so, so close at this point. As soon as you take a kill, as soon as you take a team fight, 
we sort of just have to go back to base. Like, all right, we got this small victory. It's just a battle of small victories the entire time, just throwing missiles at each other in the game of Battleship. Looking at this, despite it being a three for three or a two for two even trade, Sengoku are gonna come out more victorious in this trade because not only they took the GA off of Andres, which means he's not gonna have as much freedom to make such a risky play going for a kick or for an assassination onto the back line, but also it gave a lot of time for Rush to counter jungle and steal more gold away from Team Queso's jungle, which is only going to be better Whoa. for Rush. As Memorize looking for a taunt onto Rush, but no one is there for the follow up. Acolyte, they pick their target on the dish, he pops the Unbreakable Will, has to flash away from Danger as he was getting very low there. And Goku still keeping all five alive. Flash and Unbreakable Will means that Deju Wu doesn't have nearly as much engage on this squad. Now it feels like Team Queso have the entire pit to themselves in terms of the Drake, but they're not satisfied with that. They want to play for the vision. Excellent scouting from Juan to shoot the arrow into that brush, not getting killed. Five members from Saint Goku looking to approach the death push here. The team Queso is trying to maintain. They are too intelligent to fall to a measly pick. Team Queso trying to see if they can find an opportunity onto Juan, on Hawk. There's still cases available. That's a lot of damage. Deja Wu catches out. Memorize. He's Chocolate. getting blocked by Chain of Corruption. This could be the engage for Sengoku to just take this game into their own hands. Rest of Sengoku Gaming. Deal with Ruiz. Memorize has already been eliminated as well. Acolyte running, to going for a recall, and Elder can be the prize for Sengoku. The layers of the Sengoku team fight are stacked on stacked on stacked, but the teleport is here. Mem uh, Andres is ready and oh willing to goodness. dive into the pit. Reckless advantage. He can he get in? No! no! He's just dead! And Ibu has no means of getting in either. Rob, they're just gonna take the Elder. Wait. 2,000 HP, it would be oh, super close, missed. but the smite <gasps> from Rush is going to secure the Elder Cloud Dragon for the team of Japan. Zangoku Gaming, ace Team Queso, marching down the mid lane. And no blood was shed in that team fight, but they can't end the game quite yet. Memorized and Ruiz are going to spawn. Zangoku set their sights instead on the Baron. They're gonna take every objective off of the Rift, claiming their prize, taking a sigh of relief, knowing that they have everything they need to take this series to match point and become that much closer to qualifying for knockouts. The game is not over, Smax, but Sengoku Gaming have all the pieces necessary to start taking away every single structure from Team Queso. They can even just pick one lane, and as soon as they find one advantageous pick and maintain a numbers advantage, it will be all that is necessary to take game one. And it just feels like Hawk on this Orianna is just playing two different champions at once. He's got himself on Orianna, he's got his own health bar, and then he also has this ball. He's attaching to anybody on his team that can be in that front line. Deju Wu doing a phenomenal job as well, has all this movement speed, has the Zeke's, could potentially dive right here. They don't really need to, though. The minions are doing all the work for them right now. Even Hawk is doing a great amount of poke right now. Oh. He's throwing out command attacks into dissonance. Doesn't even have to talk to the Shockwave until he feels it will approach lethal. Both the inhibitor turrets in the mid and the dragon lane have Maybe been not. eliminated and just absolutely destroyed. Saying Goku Gaming corralling the minions. Shockwave on the Andres. Aquilate flies forward looking for it. Hexech made him pick a hero's entrance from Memorize. Tries to break up the fight, but Saying Goku Gaming are already advancing forward. A moon fall just to spy time for Team Queso. It's all gonna be all for naught because Sengoku Gaming will move to match point. One more game and they will advance to the knockout stage. A close and tense game to the bitter end. All hinged on the way that Sengoku played around the Elder Dragon. They had so many moments where they were just they knew that their job was just to push individual members outside of reach, making sure that the Venn diagram of Team Queso, with all of their circles, all of their ultimates, could not intersect. They could not land onto multiple people at the same time, isolating all of them out, scattering them like a scatter plot, ended up being the name of the game for Sengoku. And it was super, super close as well. The entire game they were trying to do this, it all exploded into the one last Elder Dragon fight. I think there's one key word that we can take away from this series from both teams, and that was patience. Patience until the late game.
Sengoku Gaming. Anytime the Team Queso had what seemed like an advantageous avenue to play through, even with the side lane turret pressure that they were exerting towards the mid game, Sengoku held strong. Their fortitude, unbreakable. It was a very patient game. The, it feels like there was just tense back and forth positioning every single time for about 17 minutes into that one. It felt like we were just coasting by. It was crazy, by. man. It, it was sort of coasting, but at the same time, we were just like <laughs> hands on the, the handles of the car the entire yeah. time. It, like <laughs> just, just 17 minutes of roller coaster buildup. Just <laughs> strap me in, Rafa. Hold my hand. It, it just seemed like. When is it gonna drop? When is it gonna drop? When are we gonna finally like just get just get the rush of excitement? And Rush was definitely bringing us to the very top, right? We got to a huge summit, and it just seemed like, all right, we're finally gonna get to the breaking point. It's gonna just break open. And it's like, nope, we're still going. Yeah. And you know what, Rafa? Because this is best of three, we we did the woo. We we did, we like went all the way around. Woo! We're winding back up again because we're gonna get into game two. That's right. The series is not over, but for us, we're gonna throw it over to the analyst desk over in Singapore with friends and Gabby Homo. Thank you, Rafa. And we definitely feel the rush of energy here in Singapore after that game. It is extremely vibrant with these two teams. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. My name is Latigris. We have Omo and Grandin here once more to break it all down. But despite all of the energy that we're talking about, the game itself felt a little more subdued, at least to start, particularly because of the pressure that both of these teams are feeling. Yeah, absolutely. I felt like Kaiso did a really good job denying a lot of the fights that Sengoku wanted to try and for, which has been their most prized strength. I want to praise Sengoku for that fact, but Sengoku ultimately were able to get those important critical pickoffs and team fights that they needed. Yeah, we heard from the Team Secret interview yesterday they were trying to avoid fighting against Sengoku because that is so known to be within their style, and a little bit of that here today, even leading to a longer game than expected from both of these teams. Yeah, and this comes back to what you mentioned as well, right? About the pressure, the stakes here on the line. Get a knockout! <laughs> yeah, this is it. This is it. It's do or die. It's the same we saw yesterday between SBTC as well as Tribe Gaming. Your tournament lives are on the line here. You gotta be a bit more careful. And I think we have step in later on as well that shows the game time of this one significantly higher than what both of these teams are used to. And the pressure on every single individual playing here, that much more when you look at the top lane, the consistent switching yeah. out of that Baron laner over on Sengoku's side, but definitely held his own here in this matchup against Acolyte. Well, I would say more than held his own. I think Kai performs very well in the team fights. You look at it, he's always the first one in. He's always the one soaking so much attention, so much aggression from Team Queso, and he almost always survives as well while still doing his job. So I think it's a great performance from him, and I want to see more from Kai as we continue. And one of those lanes that we're always going to be looking at when you look over at Team Queso and how Acolyte has been such a backbone for them. But of course you have to bring that focus as well to that jungle and mid matchup. Because on the side of Sengoku, for instance, these are the leaders of their team bringing in plenty of experience. Exactly that, right? Because Rush and Hawk were previous world champions for out of mobile titles before coming into this. I actually had the chance to talk to Hawk a little bit before his game and ask him how you guys are feeling. And he was mentioning to me, well, the rest of the team, they're still a little bit inexperienced. They feel the nerves, but going to this one, we're going to play our best. And he even highlighted to me that prior to this, in their own regional qualifiers, as they led up to their ultimate win in the finals, they were still screaming, low to mid tier Southeast Asian teams, but they got so much better throughout their boot camp, throughout their practice leading up to Horizon Cup that their old scrim partners can't hold a candle to them anymore. <laughs> and you have to think about that aspect, right? We hear about teams like DKG smashing through their scrims and the confidence that that gives them. But then on the opposite side here for Sengoku, really ramping up because of all that they have learned throughout that process of getting prepared for here today. Yeah, and I think the Sengoku that we're seeing on stage here today has definitely shown improvement from both their regional leagues as as well as from the start of the tournament as well. And I love seeing that, that growth from these teams, their willingness to experiment a little bit in both your roster and your drafts and your team play. But at the end of the day, you know what works for you, you come back to it and you make it look good. And coming back to the energy of these teams, yeah. because it's more than just the fact that, oh, we get to have a little extra fun because we hear some screaming, right? It kind of sets the <laughs> tone because on our perspective here, Team K is so getting loud. If you watch yes. their qualifying matchups, that's very in line with their personalities, but more interesting 
interesting enough, we saw the response from the other team getting loud to match the loudness from the opposite side. And here's the thing, Sengoku actually speak, speak a mix of languages. So it's in Japanese, it's in Korean, it's in English, that to bridge the gap as well. So getting loud is just one good Look, way of really getting the point across. I can just tell you that Naisu is a universal language. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I dig it, I dig it for sure. And you have to keep that mentality strong when you're looking at the stakes for this matchup, securing that knockout stage in the third seed. So if we look over to Team Queso, because it's not like they were floundering, they were holding their own. Yeah. Is there anything that you want to see adjustment-wise from them to be able to push this series a distance? Well, I think earlier on, you brought up Acolyte as well and how he's such a key player for Team Queso. To me, he's been a bit invisible in game one. We really need a better showing from him in the next two games, possibly two games, if we want to see Team Queso have a shot here. I think Kai has been playing so well, and we really need to see Acolyte match that or do even better himself. It's really going to come down to how well they're going to be able to match what Sengoku want to try and get done. Because we know what happens. Sengoku are a quite linear team, if you want to put it that way. Have that description they for fight. them. They want to <laughs> fight. And so for Team for team Queso now, they just have to watch out for that possible win condition and play to their own. I'm sure Team Queso are going to be talking through their game plan to try and pull out the victory in the second game. But let's learn more about their communication style in our Bose Sounds of the Game. They, they have no ult. They, they want top. Okay, they okay. want top. I, I, I can ult. I, I can't can get what I got. What okay? Okay, you wait. Top, you are you 4 You are 4 You are 4 You are 4 4 Okay. Oh my way, my way, my way. You can run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. I can. I'm here. 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 Okay, I ulted. Okay. Slowly, slowly, <laughs> from Chubak. Hidai, Hidai, Hidai! Holy shit. Korki, Korki! Korki, 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 Okay, nice, nice. You win? We can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Slowly, nice. slowly. Push mid. Yeah, push mid and go Drake. Push mid and go Drake. Okay, nice. <laughs> so, like, down, even Aww. before, like, like pick bad stuff. That's so sad. <laughs> we are getting ready for game two between Team Queso and Sengoku Gaming. Sengoku, the representatives of Japan, what? Many of our colleagues considered a dark horse coming into the tournament are now at match point. One game away from qualifying into the knockout stage of a Thor Horizon Cup here. And there's only one spot left, Rafa. There's only this match that matters for the rest of the seeding in Group B. Team Queso backs against the wall at this point. They need to win these next two games if they are going to continue on in Horizon Cup and make sure that today is not their last day, Sengoku. On the flip side, only really needed one more. And it can come in game two, it can come in game three. I'm sure they would prefer it to be in game two, keep in mind. And some things to mind going into this game two, and referring back to what our friends over in Singapore were talking about and what they want to see from Team Queso if we're, if we want to see a full three game series is that the game plan that they had was really more about trading objectives, First going for the Dragon, but then looking for the Rift Herald and trying to play towards side turrets and just funneling a lot of gold. And it, a lot of that gold happened to go into the pockets of Andres, which, don't get me wrong, I'm a big fan of funneling junglers as a resident jungler myself, <laughs> but he was playing Lee Sin, which is not necessarily one of the champions you think about when it comes to funneling resources to. Lee Sin is more known for trying to get things started to propel someone else forward. Yes, he can do well with resources as it really does depend on the pilot of the champion. And we saw Andres have great target selection in some of those mid-game fights, but compared to something like the Graves, the Graves were always out damage and out Lee Sin. Well, we're off of the next time that you're playing Lee Sin in my games and I take your kill, I'm not gonna hear any of your back talk. All right, listen, you're you the support, buddy. We, we gotta be funning <laughs> Alf Battery, cause he's our dragon laner. We gotta be funneling Pastry Time or TJ, cause they're our mid laners. Or we gotta funnel King. Actually, we don't need to funnel King. <laughs> he, he plays Pantheon, you know? He, do, he doesn't play any of the, the actual good champions. Oh, man. Well. <laughs> Hey, I guess if you're listening to this, we love you. Uh, we'll, we'll get you some. We'll get you some kills later. <laughs>
but yeah. for for this team comp for Team Queso, you mentioned that they're they're giving a lot of gold and they're giving a lot of experience and side lane pressure to Andres in the way that the team comp was drafted around, it feels like that should have been shifted over to Eaton because he's their only backliner on this Corky. He was the only one who was dealing a lot of sustained damage. Everybody else was just facilitators and divers to make sure that he has frontline before he arrives. The problem is they, they didn't set up that before he arrived. He was just caught out a couple of those times in the early game and put him on the wrong foot. Yeah, the front to back team fighting didn't always work out in Team Queso's favor. And you said a lot of the times, Ibu was immediately isolated out by Kai on this Renekton, who you know, definitely deserves a lot of credit yeah, for absolutely. that game because he, he single-handedly made Ibu's life a living nightmare every single time that they were trying to set up for a fight. And it's like, hmm, I see a corky in the water. <laughs> and I, you don't have any friends. You don't have any amigos, my dude. You know, you're kind of alone. And then slice and dice. That's a dick. It's like a, a shark swimming in the ocean, smelling that drip of blood, and then pouncing on the Yordle gunner. And Ibu, uh, unfortunately, got killed a couple of times because of that. Very, very well played for Kai. The way that Team Queso can combat this, though, is to have perhaps another backliner in their squad so that if somebody does get isolated and burned out, you can not run out of steam in the team fight. You have another guy, you have another marksman perhaps, who's going to be pumping out that damage when your the rest of your front line is still alive. That's something that Team Queso can do. The other opportunity uh, is if Ibu just also picks a diver and you have five of them. <laughs> Quite a few changes going into this game to draft those smacks. Not only do Team Queso look to put Deja Wu on something else and put the Libero of this team onto the back foot, trying to make him spice up the, the support pool, but also Acolyte secures Renekton away from Kai. The Camille didn't really do as much as Team Queso would have liked, and I think this is just going to spell that Team Queso not necessarily focused on funneling resources in Acolyte to be a primary split pusher as Renekton has proven to be a better laner that transitions into just flank duty. Trying to isolate and single out a primary carry from Sengoku Gaming and basically give him the same treatment that Ibu did in game one. Renekton just does it all. You really can't go wrong with locking in this champion on your squad. Uh, as you mentioned, Rafa, he has just so many tools at his disposal and a lot of those can be used to isolate this Varus that Juan is picking yet again. More pick potential for Sengoku once more, though. They're keeping this Varus. They're going to this Camille. They have to now deal with a lot of side lane threat as Andres plays the Fiora, likely in the jungle here. You know, I think Andres hurt us a little bit. He was like, you know what? You're right. I am taking a lot of these resources. I should probably play a champion that <laughs> does well with a lot of funneling into my side. And I... I I don't think this is Andres' first Fiora of this Horizon Cup. I could be wrong. Hopefully we'll, we can get someone to clarify on our production end so I don't start spewing off incorrect <laughs> stats here. But I am excited to see this stylistic pivot from Team Queso going to game two. Yeah, it's less about the, the big team fights. They do still have this Galio at the core of it, but they have more single target damage and they have more ways of continuing a team fight after their carries are dead because well they just have more of them in this game you're going to have a that blade of the ring king on renekton is going to be able to rip somebody apart not to mention this fiora not to mention the eventual marksman that we're expecting ibu to select there's no zigs available so he can't go for that mage unless he's going for the uh the old na strategy of oriana bot lane but we haven't seen that yet you know i was curious to see if sengo was going to lock in the Jax as the counterpick to Fiora that we have seen. Really innovated by Huebo over from Dakun Gaming, but if you've seen the prior Sengoku Gaming matches during this Horizon Cup Max, you know that Rush looks the absolute best when he is playing the Lee Sin, when he is driving tempo, when he's accelerating the game state, and just setting up his leaders for success. On Team KSO's side, they did actually select Ibu 
a dive champion. They have this Kai'Sa now for him, so sort of uh, taking both of our words and heeding them in this round. Uh, you know, we can feel a little proud of that, but for Team Queso, they they are definitely trying to adjust to the situation. They acknowledged that Ibu was getting picked off. They acknowledged that they were leaving him on an island, and now with this Gragas, they have more dive but they also have more disruption. They can push back away the Camille and the Lee Sin that are diving upon Team Queso. And this is really valuable because this is actually one of the only ways that you can counteract a Camille ultimate, which is you just knock her out of it with the Gragas counts. Whether it's mid Galio or mid Gragas for Ruiz, both champions will relatively do the same with resources, get super beefy, but also build decent amount of damage. And for both of these champions, they have powerful methods of engage, but especially for Gragas, if things get a little too spicy, a little too heated for the backline, and Ibu can't necessarily kill her instinct out of danger, you always have this explosive cast. If you're not using it aggressively, you can always use it defensively to punt these threats away from your backline. We talked a lot about Team Queso's draft adaptations and while Sengoku doesn't have nearly as many, there are some key differences in this one. First of all, they do have the Braum instead of Alistar. Alistar banned away, but it is notable because Braum is a very similar champion to Alistar, but much more defensive. He's not diving in past his, his carry, he's just staying with his carry. And for this game, it's likely going to be Hawk on the Orianna and Wan playing that backup as well with all the utility of these arrows. I really like this difference for Sengoku because it keeps the the same the same number of dive champions available for the Oriana Shockwave. Now it's going to be Camille instead of that Graves and or the Lee Sin instead of the Graves, excuse me. But you do also have more in the tank to stop any of the dives that Team Queso are going for in this game and did go for in game one. The exciting thing for Sengoku Gaming is not only we're seeing Rush go from a scaling jungler that prioritizes a little bit more income and resource funneling into himself, but he's now returning to the Lee Sin, which means that he is setting others up for success. We already saw how great of a job Kai did on that Renekton in game one, just continuously making Ibu not really enjoy playing the game in that in the first one of the series, but now he's playing the Camille, which means that he is going to be more than likely the primary, how should I say this, the recipient of a lot of love and attention from Rush, funneling resources into him, looking for, I, I imagine the Senku Gate Sengoku Gaming are going to be looking at the Rift Herald, prioritizing a lot of their members to shift on over before that four minute mark, and then just say, Yo Kai, I got this Rift Herald, come to this turret, you're gonna receive all this gold, and I need you to be super strong so that you can always threaten the side lane push. And as this game two begins, and Rafa, we are strapped into the roller coaster, taking our ascent into the sky. Last time, it, it took all the way until 17 minutes to really get going. Let's see if it takes that long this time. You know what's next? Let's, let's really embrace it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are getting right on board for Sengoku Gaming and Team Queso game number two. We're strapped in. Please buckle up. Uh, please buckle up. Keep your hands and hands inside the car at all times. Remain in your seat. <laughs> And that's what it's just gonna be like, <laughs> folks. Just strap in, because it's just going to be a long ascent. If we learn anything from game one, both Team Queso and Sing Goku Gaming are going to be playing with great patience and a lot of reservation and only going for absolute 100% plays. I mean, it's games like this that I can really appreciate because both teams know what their win condition is, they know how to tackle it, and they know what formula it takes to get to that win, which is really valuable because now that we are at the last stage of the group stage, trying to get into that knockout for Team Queso and Sengoku, this is their last opportunity. They don't, they didn't give themselves any other opportunity because they lost to the teams above them previously. So this is that last moment. They, this is where they need to show us what they've learned all throughout the classes of the Horizon Cup. This is an early rotation over from Andres and Ruiz. However, the wave is not quite prepped yet, so Kai knows that this is coming. He's going to have some time to prepare how to prevent this anti-dive. Watch for the tip shot. He's just going to use it to disengage. Not tries to outplay it. And now the wave will dissipate, and 
while he misses out on some gold from not being able to hit the minions, it nets only a, about a solid 500 gold lead for Acolyte, where it has the rest of the members of the Sega Gaming. We're just going to invest it into the Lady not getting any abilities to that dive at all. Just moves on back to the mid lane and takes his punishment once more as Hawk. Great health lead right here. Andre is going to relieve just a tad, but not before taking another command attack in the distance to the face. And he hit this level five with this cannon minion. It does look like that's going to be the case. All right, he can take a recall now. He can play around this rift, potentially look for an ultimate as we are just a minute away from the objective spawn. Neither member of Sengoku Gaming or Team Queso are close to him. one item power spike. We still got another solid middle left. We're gonna have to check in once again. I think the other thing that we have to note here, Smax, is just already prioritization from Team Queso. They know that Kai can be a potential and powerful split pusher. Why they prioritize, even though Andres will more than likely appreciate the farming and cuddling resources themselves. The fact that they are making sure that Acolyte stays somewhat ahead, at least for the early part of the game, sets the tone. The hardest part of the game when you draft this Fiora is that early. As you said, you're just trying to plan out where this champion is going to be, what resources it can and can't take, and especially against a champion like Sin, what fights it can and can't because at this level six point you do have access to the ultimate you have your lunge fully maxed out you can go for or lunge maxes out at seven excuse me you, you, you see what i'm saying you you have some power but it's not nearly as much as when you get that two item that three item power point you can go that size and take one v one so if, if one is gonna dive right into you by himself then you're probably gonna take that one is technically all by himself because Deja Wu is rotating on over to the top side of the map, but we called this out. Sengoku Gaming want to prioritize the Rift Herald because that is where Kai will be able to receive the majority of that gold funneling once the Rift Herald crashes and gets those extra fur plates. Now, the question is, Team Queso, will they benefit off of taking this first dragon off the table? Nice bit of sustain. Beautiful stuff from Rush, first blood over to the representatives of Japan as they move one step closer to closing out this series. It's not doomsday yet for Team Queso, but you know, Sengoku game is already making it. Yeah, I called it a dive. It was really more that Rush pushed him into the pool head first. So a little <laughs> bit unfair to Ibu there uh, as we get an actual fight up here. Acolyte getting stunned up by the Cuts Blows into the Glacial Fissure. Oh! But beautiful body slam flash from Emerize and says, come back here, boy. Kai with the explosive Let's cast sends him right back into the waiting arms of Acolyte. Let's go, Memorize. That Kragas play was nuts. The geometry here. This Shockwave tries to clear out the wave. Acolyte can't do much other than take away this honey fruit. Looks like the current take has been stopped. Memorize uh -oh. really far. Takes time. Blue Sway shoes, fancy feet. Memorize dodging out on that sonic wave. Even an opportunity for Rush to just send him to the Shadow Realm. Sengoku Gaming making sure that Team Queso don't get too far with that advantage as Sengoku still remain ahead. Memorize is like honed his mechanics between games one and two as we watch this axe replay. Oh, this is the this is the Lee Sin kick. So this is what I was saying. Ibu, okay, so he did actually attempt this dive. It wasn't Rush pushing him in, but uh, it is still a really solid play for Rush and it is quite a little fast. Honestly, I still like the, the alliteration. He was going for the dive and is like, oh, I don't want to do this. And then Rush being like the old brother's like, nope, see ya. <laughs> Skittish on the diving board, looking down, like, yeah, I don't know about this one. This is 10 feet high, you know, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm only like so tall. I'm like half of this height. I don't know. Actually. But for Acolyte, this looks pretty grim. And then, oh, you stuff. Body slam flash, catch the boat, too. This is what I was talking about, about him, like, honing his mechanics between game one and two. You you had to feel like he went back to the Team Queso break room and he was doing like thumb push-ups or something or, like <laughs> to get his mechanics going because that was insane. That was the best play that I've seen all day for this Gragas. It hasn't been a very long day so far, but it's still true. We still got three more series to go. You know, make sure, we'll, we'll come back to that. Team Queso, four against three under this Dragon Lane turret. It is going to be the first one taken down of the game too. Team Queso. 
aggressive uh -oh. Acolyte. Trying to defend against in a 2-1. Oh, no, 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 no. no. This is not looking good for Team Cases. Thanks to Goku Gaming are looking to capitalize. But then as I say that, Andres and the rest of Team Queso are just able to annihilate Deja Wu and Sengoku Gaming able to uh, retreat. But man, this is this is getting really tense, Max. Once again, we're in the state where both teams are firing response after response. This is a more rocky ride of the roller coaster for game two, Rob. Watch this team fight once more. Acolyte getting picked off in the mid lane. It was the shockwave for single. It's a very crucial moment because I don't think they really knew just how explosive the oncoming 4v4 would truly be. Team Peso fully aware of this. They fully know that they have all this engaged potential. They can toss Ruiz into that back line and memorize playing this line super, super well once more, bumping everybody away from his low health members. And again, just all this redirection of his abilities. Ruiz catching out Rush with this on button. Chain of Corruption on the Memorize doesn't actually net into much for Sengoku Gaming, but I wonder if it's just the pressure alone that they were trying to maintain control of this river. But the Scuttle Crab still goes over to Team Queso, and Andres was able to snipe that one away from Rush. Rush looking for the Sonic Wave onto the Resonating Strike. Not going to take that second part, though. Half the Light did have that Ruthless Predator available. Dragon is a live smash. Second wave of the objective. Okay, so more enemies from Dragon Barrel. We already used Dragon Barrel to fight scuffle. They don't have the hero's entrance. They don't have the killing yet. They're pushing, they're pushing all the way up on this Baron side of the map. And with the turret already taken previously, this does feel like potentially an inner turret. If Andres feels the need to drop the Dragon Barrel to back in the way just to add, it certainly could have been that inner. The window was evaporating fast, Smacks, because Sengoku Gaming, quick on the rotation, immediately bolted towards the top side of the map. The rest of Team Queso said, you know what, maybe we could have, but we're content with holding on to this for now. There will be greater rewards to reap if Sengoku Gaming fall to Team Queso in an advantageous team fight, and then they come through their own in taking more than one structure. You know what's really interesting to me this game, Rafa? It's not something that you usually look at a whole lot, but on the side of Team Queso, every single one of their five members has gone for first. Now, this item does provide you with magic resistance, which is nice against Hawk, but more importantly, it makes it so you can't get stunned up fast. Whoa, memorize. Proto Belt is a body slam, just forced oh. Hawk's hand. He flashed over the wall. Ruiz is still on the chase. This is a, a this is a very dangerous Galio to be messing with. So Ruiz actually could threaten Hawk's life there, but Hawk is able to maintain his cool. Doesn't even throw out the Shockwave. He's going to maintain that as he will get a recall in. A couple of crucial abilities used there for Team okay, So most notably, all of them on Ruiz. He doesn't have that hero's entrance again. So going to have to wait for that cooldown to come back if they want to go for another big explosive team fight. Luckily for Team okay, So there's no big objective on the Rift right now. But I'm sure they're looking at this mid lane turret that they want to crack open. Once you do crack open all of the outer turrets, the enemy jungle is much more accessible to you. How patient will memorize? I was I was hoping that there would be like a kind of a long call that memorize will just use Eboo as bait. And then someone comes up and then you just surprise them with body slam and then cast them right back into Eagle's waiting hands. But so far, it looks like Memorize taking a more aggressive approach, trying to scout out some vision control in this quadrant, which means, once again, Max, we are... This time around, Team Queso have a solid 3,000 gold lead, so it's nothing to stop at, but Sengoku Gaming, not necessarily strangers to this situation. And they have more defensive tools this time with Dejiwu on the Braum. It's, uh, it's not the very fun build that Max Green goes for. Four goes flash and goes for two offensive summoner spells, but it is more favorable to the the retreat side of things. You do have that extra movement for Deji Will to go for if need be. Of course, one is available. Wow. Andres pops a grand challenge. Juan says, "Yeah, I don't want to challenge you, buddy. You, you, I'm good. I'm gonna flash over the wall and just take my reprieve." This potentially opens up this tier one turn. Rift Herald has already been used. When, when did that happen? Yeah, I, I believe they popped in mid lane, but it was quickly dealt with. So Team Queso don't have that tool anymore. They, they didn't get a nice chunk off right there. So eventually it could pay dividends, but it just hasn't yet. They haven't been able to break apart the game 
yet. That's what they're still looking for for Team K. So it seems like we're getting more and more back into the realm of patience for these two teams, which again, I do really appreciate. But after the whiplash that we got in the early game, it is sort of, uh, you know, we're, we're getting back to the same old, same old. Spelling a lot of yet on this. Lots and lots of yet. Yet seems to be the big word. Oh, well, yet to come, Andres locked up in this XF made of Ruiz. Oh! Finding Super Free using the, the hero's entrance, but he might have just sent himself to death. Oh, Memorize trying to come in with the body slam flash, throws out the explosive cap from Rush with a quick flash through the wall. Pops the stasis just to make sure he doesn't die to the ignite. Meanwhile, Acolyte has also joined the fray, and he helps take down Kai in the exchange. A couple of solid kills in Ruiz. Playing the sacrifice on the Galio. His gargoyle ways lead him over into Andres, making sure that his Fiora does not die. And like we have been saying since the draft, this composition is more built around that jungle spot. Andres can be a carry in the team fights in the side lane, which seemed like what he wanted to do in game one anyway, but he didn't have the tool to do it. Now Team Queso, they save that carry, they save their golden child, but they lose out on this Infernal Dragon. That's one more stack that Sengoku has toward their Elder Dragon goal that they had in game one as well as we get to watch this one again. The pick was prime, the target was juicy for the taking. And Andres, you know, even the is not gonna save him from being locked down in that trap. But you have to feel for Ruiz who gave his life for the greater cause. All those taking down Rush, it had to be almost up to memorize. Unfortunately, it's not enough damage to the back of them, but they are able to trade since, since Kai did overextend his moment. Yeah, that's been true. Uh, in the picture, picture down there. And it's another fight. Explosive cast, right on to one. The rest of the members, Kai will go down for the efforts here. Grand Challenge has been popped a lot of healing. We'll sustain the rest of the members of Team K so they go forward on the chase. Deja Wu critically low on HP, and it's a beautiful barrel from Memorize that will catch him out. Ruth the Predator on the hawk. The flash over the wall. Ibu tries to follow up with the killer instinct, but he will not find him quite yet. Hawk will make his great escape, but the rest of Team Queso potentially challenging Baron? Team Queso certainly could do this. Rush has flash, or no, not flash, he has smite available. Scouting out the area, seeing if they're going for the Baron or if they are lying in wait. Turns out it's the latter. Oh, but Andres, he saw Rush walk up, but he says, I need one. One is the key. One is the the one that they need to take down, and the grand challenge has been initiated, and it goes down in the blink of an eye. No AD carry, no dragon laner for Sengoku, and now their power has been diminished here. Took a bit too long though, Rafa, but the rest of Sengoku are here. Now another ultimate onto this carry for Team Queso, taking out Andres, no more Baron, and Team Queso have to run for the hills. Andres gives up his life. Sengoku Gaming won't be able to answer it on the Baron, and there's no other neutral objective left quite yet. The Elder Cloud still takes some time. We're taking a look back at this reasons, and then this replay here is back. Want to see how this all is. Okay, so finally committed to kill that mid lane turret. They got fed up with the turret. That structure, you're going down, I've got my eye on you. And then Sengoku really just over trying to punish them for it. They don't have as many tools as they thought they did. But for Team Queso, they are really, really strong in this team fight. I feel like they don't quite realize it because they really just wanted that mid lane turret and they sort of stumbled into a favorable team fight. But even still, they got some really valuable picks off there and they retained that lead and break apart the map further so they can stretch that. 3,000 gold lead despite it all for Team Queso here, but Sengoku Gaming, the later the game goes, the less that that gold lead will be of significance for this European roster. Team Queso still down, backs against the wall. You have to remind our folks at home, Sengoku Gaming, they are at match point. Even though being behind, one more advantageous team fight could be what sends them advancing into the knockout stage. This win on the horizon for Sengoku Gaming. They can see it in their eyes. They can smell it on the ground and in the air. They know that all it would take is one Nexus for them to get into this playoff round as Andres fighting with Rush into a team fight. Memorize throws out the explosive cast, tries to break up the fight here. He advances oh, forward with four man taunt from Ruiz. Can they capitalize? Can Team Queso pick up the pieces? Can they do janitor duty? It's already one taken off. 
the table. Desi Wu is critically low. He's gone. And Rush has to flee the scene of the crime because he's also low on HP. Do Team Queso flip it? But Baron's a little too scary to take even with the number advantage. Team Queso again in two in a team fight, but they don't have the health bars. They don't have the confidence to go for that really risky Baron. Instead, they take a reset. They know that the death timers will still be up when it comes to this Elder. Elder Cloud Dragon up and ready for the taking. Rush in the area. Can he steal this? Check this out. One, despite 15 seconds down, has bought the teleport enchantment. We're gonna have to see if Sengoku Gaming can stall enough time. Memorize on the flank, looking for the body slam. It's a Dragon's Rage from Rush, trying to keep Hawk safe. Ruiz is playing goalkeeper, a tactical sweep. They're putting all the members on to Rush to make sure he doesn't get in, and the Elder Cloud will be secured for Team Kaisal, the representative of Europe, on their last legs. A Vax against the wall, but they're super low on HP. Ruiz advancing forward, the taunt on the three, but Kai advancing into the front lines, through into the back lines with the hook line. He looks for tactical sweep on the end. Can he out damage him, but he will stay alive. Stay says it's a double kill for Ibu. He still has killer instinct. Can he find Hawk? Oh. Hawk will go down. He takes out Ruiz in the blink of an eye. And now it's only Andres and Ibu that are left standing. Sengoku are still competing in this team fight after the Elder Dragon was taken thanks to some quick decision making on the teleports. They arrived into the team fight. The two members that got picked off previously, they are left with some table scraps after the Elder was already taken. And that is is thanks to the previous player from Team K. So that is thanks to their positioning around the pit and specifically memorized who pushed everybody outside of reach, making sure that objective was theirs. Take a moment to breathe, Smacks, because my God, we were at the summit for a while and I thought we were about to come crashing down, but we still got one more slope to reach. I can feel it. This positioning from Kai, he is really the difference maker on Zango. He is the reason that they were still competitive in this team fight. Yes, his Hextech Ultimatum does get parried, but watch this re engage for him. Watch him dive back in in the stasis to stall out for Ibu. He doesn't get to re engage, and then we also get to see Hawkeye's Oriana doing a lot of work too. He, he does live by the end, even the Elder Ring. Ah, ah, rush! Stasis! Hero's entrance there. He's gonna safeguard away. Shockwave. That's a huge shockwave from Hawk. Can it be game changing? Can it be the one that sends Goku into the knockout stage? There's Hawk still multiple members from Team Cancel alive. Ibu is gonna run away, but it looks like Acolyte will fall to Saint Goku Gaming. The representative of Japan. They can see the win in their eyes. And they take out Memorize, and it's only Ibu for 38 seconds to defend the base by himself. But look at Ibu, he's cutting off the minion wave. He's gonna be able to buy some time. Memorize is also just delaying them as long as possible. Sengoku Gaming, they're gonna pull in the teleport. They're gonna try to do as much damage as they can. No need for Baron, no need for any other objective. The Nexus is what they want, Smax. Memorize roped everybody from Sengoku away this is it. from the Baron, but they don't want the Baron, Rafa. They, they want, want the Nexus, they want the knockout stage, and they're gonna get it. Sengoku Gaming to third seed. Congratulations to Sengoku Gaming, the dark horse of Japan. After thick and thin, a magnificent battle from Team Queso, the representatives of Europe. They fought them to the very bitter end, but you can see the elation in their voices. You can hear them give it to them. Let them know how proud you are to advance to the knockout stage. Hats off to Team Queso, they fought hard. It is a disappointing end to their journey here, but they can hold their heads up high for pushing Saint Goku Gaming to the very yeah! end. The Warriors have done it. The old heads, the experienced crew of players, they've been through a lot together, and they will continue that journey here in the Horizon Cup. They qualify for that knockout stage. Ooh, and I believe that means that they will be playing against the second seed from Group A as well. Let's see that selfie game. Victory selfie right here, ladies and gentlemen, for qualifying into the knockout stage from Group B. They will join Team Secret and Thunder Talk Gaming as the other three representatives coming from Group B. They will now await to see the last seed 
coming out of Group A. Although this does, poster, right? they, they, this does put them against the minds of Korea. KT Poster Y. Yeah, that's gonna be exciting. That matchup happening in two days. Sengoku will be taking a well-earned day off. Unfortunately for Team Peso, they, they have a lot of things off after this one as they have been knocked out. <laughs> but it was a close one. Both of those games were neck and neck the entire time. And I think Team Queso does deserve, deserve a lot of credit. They, I want people to remember that when they look back at the series score, that yes, it was a 2-0 for Sengoku Gaming, but it wasn't a stomp. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just Sengoku walking and waltzing all over Team Queso. They had solid game plans. They had very convincing team fighting. And it took them all the way to the late game. And it always just came down to one team fight that just gave Sengoku the last edge. The war of attrition play style is what led Sengoku to victory. And they're going to need that one as well as we progress on through into the Horizon Cup. The playoffs are best of five. So we've got a lot of action uh, ready and waiting for Sengoku uh, in that one. I can't wait. I can't wait to see this team it's gonna be the a best blast, of five. Man. Their preparation has been so cool to watch and unfold in these games that are so, so close. Just punches, punches, nothing knockout until the very end. These games are so long, so tense, and so thrilling. Well, I definitely know some friends who want to get some punches of knowledge as they get ready to break down that immaculate series from Sengoku Gaming. Thank you very much, Rafa, with the one-two. Sengoku get on through into the next round, and they're going to be playing Ralster. That was a huge, huge win there for them. Here is our uh, first look at the knockout stage. You can see Team Secret currently waiting. Thunder Talk also waiting on that opposite side, but a huge, huge win there for Sengoku Gaming over Team Queso. And here it starts with the draft. Riku, uh, you were saying how, uh, how much it was going to be important on finding new picks, finding new ways. Well, I mean, even in that game number two, Team Queso got creative. They were still able to pick up the Fiora and had Renekton on the top side of the map, had the Galio. It felt like things were going well there for the draft, but it didn't quite work out that way. What'd you see? Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, Queso was really smart to have Gargas Galli on their draft, right? Uh, so there's a lot of mind games going around. Uh, but for Son Goku, you know, they said, hey, Hack had a solid game on the Orianna. It's a safe pick to either of the flex, mat flex matchups, either the Gragas or the Galio going mid. So why not pick it up again? And you have two picks that can deliver the ball, which is, you know, Camille on Kai, Rush and this Lee Sin. So I really like the adjustment that Sengoku did for this draft. And I do have to add that the Nunu ban didn't really make a lot of sense, given that you're giving Lee Sin to Rush anyways. You looked amazing on it. I think it's one of his most popular picks and will continue to be into the playoffs. Uh, so the Nunu ban felt a little bit wasted. Then there was the problem that they kept digging deep, trying to find a pick for Ibu to have as much impact on as the Senna uh, that was banned. And it, it, you know, they tried the Corky in the first game, didn't work out well. Earlier in the tournament, the Draven didn't work out well. And the Kaiser again, nice try, but it wasn't enough. And Queso didn't really have an answer to help Ibu. Yeah, and even once we get past the draft, this game was so great. Both games in this series, so great. We, uh, just a quick stat here. The game times for both these squads, sub 20, both games, you could just feel they were going longer and longer here, Rocky. Yeah, I mean, that, that play top lane was so huge. Actually, a lot of the notes that I did take down were mostly pos positives for Team Queso. It was so crazy that it came down to the smallest margins in team fights. Um, and yeah, I mean, Sengoku had the Orianna, had the uh, Varus, who were dishing out a lot of damage throughout uh, the duration of the extended team fights that we did see that they were able to finally overcome. Yeah, I have to agree with uh, Iraqi here. I mean, I was looking at how Ibu was able to adjust, you know, especially that, you know, they pick Kaisa into Varus. It's either going to force you to just take a lot of pokes in the lane uh, since you're going to get outranged, or, you know, most of what teams do is lane swap. And that is exactly what we saw. Uh, but since they didn't want Acolyte's lane to suffer, they decided to just put Ibu in the mid lane uh, because Ru Ruiz can manage on his own as the Galio um, with his level 5 ult and and more. So props to Ibu for surviving the laning phase. And after that, after he survived the laning phase, it was just so, so back and forth. And I think the, the most crucial moment was definitely 
after Elder, it felt like, you know, it felt like Team Kesso was about to take it to game three. Watch the minimap here. Uh, I love this attempt by Ibu. It wasn't enough, but watch the minimap. Kaiser's gonna cancel recall, gonna move up to the wave and try to cut it off. Uh, that would have been enough to stall the game and have possibly another chance to make a comeback. But Sengoku had another wave in the bot lane. So after killing uh, the Gragas, they just pushed along with it. The TP came through and they were able to kill the Nexus. Oh, for sure. It just multiple times here in this game where you felt like uh, Team Queso did enough to close out on Sengoku, whether it was the pick around the Baron area, uh, but then Andre stayed a little bit too long. Down over the Elder Dragon fight, taking the Elder Dragon fighting through. Sengoku Gaming still found ways to get back into the game and, and, and get it done. And I think that speaks volumes of this team now that has another a uh, big task on them. So if you take a look at uh, Sengoku Gaming moving on to the next round, what is the big takeaway that they can have from this series as a whole? And we'll start with you first, Araki. So I do think they, they understood that the biggest win condition is to have some sort of an early game tempo jungler such as the Lee Sin. The problem is they don't have too many of those, right? It's only the Lee Sin, it's only the Nunu. So if KT Rolster facing them off in the quarterfinals do recognize uh, that if they ban it away or take it away, that they'll have an advantage. I, I, Sengoku are going to struggle, but there are a lot of things that they did find well in this uh, series, especially, like I said, playing around the uh, bot lane and the early game. Uh, so that's a positive, at least there. Riku? Uh, for me, I like the pivot from Dejiwo. Uh, Alistar has been banned. Might as well lock in a good disengaged champion like a Braum to make sure that Hawk and Wan are going to be protected, especially looking at the composition uh, that we saw. Galileo and Gragas, that's going to be deadly. So I really like the adjustment that they could do, that they don't have to be super aggressive all the time at the early game, and that mindset is going to be very helpful coming into the playoffs. And of course, with the finale yeah, looking of these... more to... Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead, uh, Rocky. I was going to say, looking more towards the bot lane, the Varus is uh, a pick they've been repeatedly focusing on, and I think it looks really good. It's a very similar composition to what we see. Uh, we saw Team Secret pull out yesterday when they had both Varus and Orianna with a split pusher. Uh, for Sengoku, it was the Camille, and that way they can offer them a lot of space. It didn't. They didn't play the 1-4 perfect here, but the idea is definitely there, and if they manage to find the execution, it's very strong and really hard to deal with. And with the finale of this series, this is the last time we get to see Team Queso, the representative of Europe. They had a, a great run through Origin Series. So, Riku, uh, what do you make of this team's run here at Horizon Cup? I think it's super impressive. You know, they were still able they were still able to push Sengoku Gaming to their limits. Um, and I really like how they mesh with the 5v5 team fights, um, especially, you know, Memorized and Andre as well with their performances have been incredibly solid. Where, whether or not they're on carries or engaged, it's still really, really nice to watch. And again, they pushed Sengoku Gaming to their limits today. Um, and really, uh, they really are, should be proud of their performance here at the Horizon Cup. Mm -hmm. Araki. Yeah, I, I think they can keep their heads high. Uh, EU and NA both do go out in groups. Uh, the Western, <laughs> these two Western regions in particular are not having the best results, unfortunately, but there's a lot more to look forward to coming next year and a lot of lessons to take home and learn from. Yeah, definitely. Well, one of the best parts of Sengoku advancing to the knockouts. Hopefully we get a little bit more clips of Rush dancing. Check out these dance moves right here by that young man right there. It looks as, uh, as, as smooth as his Lee Sin, right? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Hey, wait, are you not impressed? What's that. going on? <laughs> <laughs> we are impressed. <laughs> oh, I wish we could show the cast casters. His early right game and his dancing skills. They're, they're getting the dance. I don't, I don't have. I don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't have too many comments. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, well, as we like close the chapter up. here, it's time for us to step away. But when we return, Thunder Talk and Ebro take the stage for the last time before the knockouts. As we go, please check out Panic Show, Ebro's ga Ebro Gaming's fan-voted battle anthem, along with the rest of the teams competing at the Horizon Cup on the official Horizon Cup playlist on Spotify. See you in a few.
the beginning. What's going on? Jake from State Farm, the perp just confessed. I think, or I don't know. Uh, what? Oh, can't afford streaming anymore, so here we are. Oh, don't give up what you love. State Farm has options to personalize your policy so you get a rate that fits your budget. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. The subtitles would be nice. For surprisingly great rates to fit any budget, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today.